it's Renee here and today I'm going to show you guys how to make this cute little laundry day coin purse you can hear it. this is mine it's already got change in it I'm ready to go with it I actually used it today but I just thought this would be a cute idea as a handmade gift for the holidays um, this would make a great gift for a uh, you know a college kid or maybe someone uh, and an adult child who's moved out on their own you know got their first apartment and they're going to be doing a lot of laundry so you can make this little handy little coin purse and I like the idea of it because I can carry my change into the laundromat and I don't have to lug my pocketbook in there and I don't have to <laughs> have a pants pocket full of quarters so so anyway I'm going to show you guys step by step how to make this and again I'll say at the beginning of this video I encourage you to use found materials um, you can use scrap fabrics for this the only thing really new that you would need is the zipper and some interfacing so we're going to go ahead and get started what you want to do um, to make this little coin purse is to make a little pattern and I actually made mine using my clear quilting square and mine measures four and a half by four and a half and this to me is just the perfect size this is not a big clunky wallet you're not going to carry a lot of stuff in it it's for small amounts of cash or quarters you know it's a laundry day wallet you could also make one for like you know out to eat fast food whatever for your college kid but we're doing a laundry day wallet today so anyway you can see what you get when you do this pattern this way I wouldn't recommend going any smaller this is just the right size for the palm of your hand and um, a bigger might be you getting into like a wallet or a little purse so we don't want to do that because it, it depending on the colors and the little appliques you make you can make this for a guy or a gal so okay so the next thing you'd want to do after you have your pattern cut out is you're going to want two pieces of fusible interfacing cut out to the size of the pattern you're going to want two outside pieces and this is I've already got right sides facing together I like cutting my fabric with right sides already facing together if I'm going to sew it because you know well I am going to add an applique but anyway we still have to put the interfacing on and then we want two pieces for the lining and we're not going to add interfacing to this because I have found that it just works a lot better and that's right sides facing together this is going to be my inside fabric so the first thing that we want to do is with our shiny sides of our interfacing yeah shiny sides we want to lay those up with the wrong side of the fabric facing the shiny side of the interfacing. And then we're going to take our iron and I, depending on the fabric that you're ironing, you're pressing the interfacing to, that is how you determine the heat of the iron. And I actually have this on just about the highest setting. So I'm just going to go over and I'm not going to push the fabric. I'm going to sit the iron down on it and hold it there for a few seconds and then move it over and hold it there for a few seconds. And I can kind of glide once I've got it stuck there just to make sure it's finally stuck. And you'll find that ironing on the back side of the fab, the on the interspacing side is really difficult to do. It actually, the fabric wants to do all kinds of funny things and the interfacing wants to wrinkle so as long as you can get this pressed down on the front side on the fabric side you're doing good and you see this stain here because this is found fabric but I'm going to use this side and cover that stain up with the applique this is um, feed sack material so it has some staining and some marks and even some nicks on it but this is kind of a little upcycled gift so you know like I said, you can use found materials. You can always cover those little flaws in the fabric. The next thing you would want to do is you want to cut out these. I, I did a little tank top and um, some shorts. And I've already got them cut out, but I'm going to show you how I did that. And you can use just any kind of scrap material for this. But I do recommend using a small print like this. You can take a scrap piece of interfacing. And first I'm going to set the scrap piece aside. And you want to cut you a couple of different colored 
pieces of fabric. So now what I'm going to do is take this interfacing and lay these scrap pieces of fabric on top of it. And this is just the easiest way I found to do this. And you want, if it's a pattern and you know the right side from the wrong side, you want the right side facing up. It's just, you know, the same thing you were doing when we pressed the interfacing onto the outside of the bag. So then we're just going to press this fabric onto here and then you can flip it over and take a pencil and just freehand I'm going to draw a little pair of pants on here and if you mess up a little bit it's okay it's not going to show so I've got the pants freehand drawn onto the blue side now I want to draw a, a shirt and it's just a cute whimsical little shirt so you know it doesn't have to be perfect so see I've got the shirt and the pants and now we just want to cut them out very carefully So there you have it, your little shirt and pants. We got our little pants and our little shirt. And I think I will use that one on this bag that I just cut out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find a way to cover this stain. Maybe maybe if I turn it like this and put the t-shirt on top like that, that'll cover it up. So yeah. So then the next thing I want to do is machine stitch this. And you can hand stitch if, if you feel better about doing it that way. I actually was really pleased with the way my machine stitch turned out. Since I have this, can't stop thanking you enough, Marjorie, for this Viking Husqvarna. Since I have it, and it does have speed control and, and all those nice little features on it, I turned it all the way down to the lowest speed, and I just took my time. And you can see little places where I backstitch. You want to do that because if the person you gift this to or even yourself, well, whoever has it, ever has to wash it, even hand washing it, if you don't backstitch, all of this stuff is coming off. So you want to backstitch. So hopefully you guys can see this good enough. I like to start at the top of these little pants. And I'm going to... I'm turning my stitch length up to 3.0. I'm turning my speed all the way down. And I'm going to very carefully go over this and do a tiny, as tiny of a back stitch as I can, but I want to get that back stitch in there. So I'm going to do that. And I have to get really close because I have to take my glasses off to do this. So. And then when we get to the edge, we want to just not go all the way over the edge of the applique, the little pants. We want to push our needle down in there by hand and then turn it. Once we are far enough, I need one more stitch in that. That's just not far enough over the edge. And then we just turn it, line it up, and then we're going to... So you see there we have it. There's our little pants. Now we just need to very carefully put our little shirt on here. And like I said, I'm covering that stain that was on that fabric. So I want to make sure I get that covered up. And I'm going to start at the bottom or the hemline of the shirt. There you have it. We got our little jeans and our little t-shirts on on there. Now we just need to start putting the bag together. Okay, so the other thing you want to do if you want to add the little loop like I did in my first bag I made here, you need some gross grain ribbon or you can make a loop. 
using your matching fabric or you know just if you want that loop there so that it can you can attach your keys to it or something you just want to cut about two and a half inches and fold it over and just place it about three-fourths of an inch below the top line of the bag and just stitch it on there really quick and I'm so then our next step is we're going to have a zipper and um, it, you can use a zipper that's larger than what you need you obviously can't use a smaller one because of the opening of this you don't want to make any ends on this zipper or it's um, just you're not going to be able to get your fingers down in there to get the change out so you want a, a zipper that's slightly longer than the project that you're working on the size of the bag so I'm going to take my zipper foot out and I, I think I've said in other videos but if this is my first video the first video of mine that you're watching you won't know this I always sew from the same side of the zipper foot even though you can change sides on this zipper foot it just seemed like the easier way for me and I've gotten into a habit of doing it that way so I, and I can't break the habit but you can switch that foot around just as long as the zipper is on the outside of whatever side of the foot you've got it on you know if you've got it over here if you've got the zipper foot on the left side which is the left side facing you you'd want the zipper to be to the left of that and if it's the right to the right of that so blah 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 so we're going to put the right side of the zipper facing down on the right side of the bag and I think I always try to put the um, pull on the end where I've got the little loop so now I have this sewn onto this side of the zipper now what I'm going to do is take A lining piece with right sides facing together and I'm going to lay it on top of the zipper so that the zipper is sandwiched in between the two layers. I want to make sure everything is lined up good and for some reason it seems like one side of my bag this time is slightly longer than the other or wider but that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is once I have everything lined up and I'm sure that it's all in, in place I'm going to use the other side of the fabric so that I can follow that line that first stitch that I made and keep everything neat and in line I have the first piece for the inside and the outside and I'm going to straighten that out and what I'm going to do is just press it real quick on both sides and then I'm going to sandwich the other layers together on there. So I've got that pressed down. Now what I want to do is take the other front piece and line it up with right sides facing together. And once I've got everything in line, I'm going to turn it over to the zipper side. You just want to get a good grasp on everything so that nothing slides out of the way. You can pin this. If it makes you feel better, I have been doing this for a little while and, and I just don't like to pin these zippers because I find it bunches up and it actually messes me up instead of helping. With this interfacing in here and it being so small, you can get a good grip on it and you don't need to stop and pin everything. So I got that second side on there and now I'm going to do the same thing with the lining. We're going to sandwich these two lining pieces together. So now we have all of our layers and what I want to do is press the second side back in front that I just did. Now that I've got everything pressed, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to go ahead and take this zipper foot off and I'm going to put my straight stitch foot back on. I don't know if that's what you call it or not. And what I want to do is, first of all, you can't see me. Second of all, you want to open the zipper up to not quite all the way. This is a really small bag, so you want to make sure that that zipper pull is facing the larger opening of that so that you don't end up sewing over it. And you want to just sandwich these layers together with right sides facing each other. And then you do want to pin in a couple of places just 
to make sure that everything's held in place, especially since the end that where you unzip the zipper is loose. There's it's not held together. So I'm not even going to bother to um, pin anything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the whole bottom completely open for turning. I'm not going to stitch it together at all and then I'll turn it and close it up. So I'm going to start on one side of the lining. So now you see we've got everything sewn together and we've left this bottom part open. Now what we want to do is do a little bit of clipping before we finish up the bag. I'm going to clip off these ends of the zipper. I'm going to take out the pins, which I should have done before I clipped the zipper. And I'm going to clip the corners of the outside of the bag, but I'm not clipping through the stitching where it would, you know, make a hole. Just want to clip up to the edge and if there's any overlapping like that you want to clip it because it's a small bag and it'll be bulky if you don't um, neaten everything up. And the bottom I'm going to clip it to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay so now we turn. I'm going to grab a wooden dowel and just start poking. Open that zipper up all the way and just poke your corners out very carefully. You don't want to tear the interfacing and you surely don't want to tear the bag. So the next thing I want to do is I want to press this outside. And I'm also going to I'm going to fold this opening at the bottom and I'm going to press it so that I can sew it closed. So now we've got everything pressed. We pressed a fold down in this and we just want to right along the edge you want to sew it closed and you want to do a back stitch on each end but you don't want to start right at the edge because one thing with a lot of machines most machines home sewing machines is if you start right here there's a little bit of a clumpy fabric and when you try to back stitch that to make that that back stitch to close it up it's going to bunch up and cram up and make a mess. So I start about a quarter of an inch from the edge or from that little corner down there and then I start back stitching. Very just need to clip my threads and then we're going to push it down in here and we're going to try to make sure that all the corners are poached out like they're supposed to poached out, poked out like they're supposed to be and down in there really good. And once everything is the way you want it, you close it up, you press it one more time. You want to feel around and see if there's anything clumping up in there that you want to fix before you go pressing again. There you go. There's your little handmade laundry day coin purse. And you can make this and gift it to, a, like I said, like a college kid or your adult child who's moving out on their own for the first time and maybe fill it with quarters or dollar bills so they can use it on laundry day and be a nice little Christmas gift, a little stocking stuffer. Um, I will be making quite a few of these to sell in my Etsy shop. If you guys want to purchase one from my Etsy store, feel free to go in there and if this is a couple years down the road and you see this video and I still have my Etsy store, you can contact me and I maybe will make you one. I'm sure I'll have plenty of scrap fabric by then too. So that's it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Peace. Bye-bye.